in a world whose hosts cried out for a replacement to Thunderdome. Thunderdome! The Top Ten is proud to bring you the Realist. Realist! Realist! <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Realist. 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 I don't have my phone on me. That's so good. It's very well done. Uh, One of the best I've ever heard. Thank you. Thank you. I did that with my mouth. Uh, for those new to The Realist, the, the way this show works is we open it up to the people that uh, support us over at patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10. Mm-hmm. And uh, we draw three names at random. The first person sets the topic. The other two names, they send in their lists. And at the end, we combine the two of them. We don't add or subtract any movies. And uh, it is a show that's for you. It's by you. And uh, we're we're just experiencing this along right with you. Right. Uh, we don't know what uh, the topic is or anybody's list until we open up the email that we get from Chris Alexakos, who helps us out so much with everything we do with the uh, Patreon. Uh, and our thanks to him, because we know that uh, this oh. month's two read lists were difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the topic was chosen by Jeff Kelly this month, mm-hmm. and he chose top 10 movies featuring a dog. Okay. That was his topic of choice. Interesting. And then yeah. two contestants are, oh, look at that, Jonathan Caro. Oh. And the man who helps us out so much, Christos Alexakos. Alexakos. Uh, he said he reached out to numerous people. He is a member of this tier, so it's not, he's like, I, yeah. eventually nobody responded back on this one. So I, I, I stepped up. Oh, he put himself in the mix. He put himself in the mix. Okay. And I think that is admirable, and uh, yeah. you're putting in even more work because now you got to do research on all this stuff. And I like that he's at least taking part in something that he has by rights. You know, he's a member of this tier. Right. So he should be doing anyway, and I think he's excluded himself wow. since he's been helping us. Well, I appreciate that. I, I don't know what it is. I can't seem to find it, Matt. I'm sorry. I thought I had it up. I thought we were doing another. I don't seem to see. Is it an email from from I him? I forwarded one, you one this morning. Okay, so this morning on my uh, to the new uh, your new email account. That's the issue. I apologize. I'm on the old email account of Yahoo. That's what I'm used to getting. Okay, I'll and here it is. Here it is. I found it. Let's keep going. I'm good. Sorry, guys. Apologies to everybody. Yes, Jeff Kelly, G J E O F F. Top ten movies featuring a dog. Yeah. Um, he sent right. it to your old one. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I forwarded it over. No yeah, worries. so it's Jeff, Jonathan Caro, and Mr. Christos Alexakos. All right, who do you want to take, my man? Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start us off. Okay. Uh, it looks like uh, Jonathan Caro's or Caro's list is first. That he does. And he says, hi, Matt and John. It's great to be selected for the relist, specifically for the topic about movies featuring dog- dogs. This was a fun topic to be a participant for, as there were plenty of movies slash childhood favorites to choose from featuring a dog. Truth. I do have a cheat on the list that I can make a case for for this topic. <laughs> Interesting. And before y'all get started on my list, I must comment that I enjoyed the Schmodown documentary, The Outlaw. Oh. Uh, it was informative, entertaining, and full of gratitude and love for John. It's always great to see him play in a Schmodown match alongside Dan Merle and in the past uh, with Matt. But one question, why wasn't Matt in the documentary commenting <laughs> about his experience in the Schmodown with John? Uh, Matt. They interviewed me for it. Did they? Yeah. Really? They cut me out, I guess. The first one or the second one? Because there were two different documentaries. Oh, I fucking, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they, like, they shot a first one like a year and a half ago or two years ago, and then they shot one again recently last uh, year for the free for all at the free for all. So, okay. around March or something like that. So, maybe Matt was interviewed for the first run of that. And then they only used the footage from the second attempt at the documentary. So, but yes, I agree. Madno should have been in it somehow, some way. He should have been interviewed for the situation. Uh, my girlfriend is also super pissed that she wasn't uh, interviewed about it as well. Having been with me in the Schmodown for the last year now, she was uh, a little upset that she wasn't. Not in a, a real way, but she was a little bit upset that she wasn't on it. But uh, thank you so much for the compliments. It's very nice. Um, all right, let's jump in. Um, he's got honorable mentions, but we can get to those afterwards. Just sure, in case sure. They're on your list. At 10, he's got My Dog Skip. Okay, so I've got to go down and take a look at these. 
Not on the list. All right. right. Jonathan says, despite a simple, predictable story, the movie works as a reflection of a troubled childhood and how a Jack Russell Terrier changed his life. Frankie Muniz gave a wonderful performance as Willie Morris and the dog who played Skip was adorable. Plus, I'll confess, even though I rarely cry during a film, this movie's ending got me. Wow. I've never seen it, but, uh, you know, dogs always have a way of eliciting strong emotions from people, so I'm not surprised that ending gotcha and uh, Frankie Muniz. Uh, There you go. Given the time he came out, you think this was the Frasier dog? As a oh, Jack Russell Terrier? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Certainly possible. A lot of, uh, you know, the Jack Russell Terrier is a distinct dog. So, yeah, it's certainly possible that was the one trained to do it. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, trained to do cues and all that jazz. It's yeah. kind of, you know, rarefied air. I can't think of another Jack Russell Terrier. Yeah. That would have been working, so to speak. Uh, yeah, I've never seen it. I remember when it came out and I saw the trailer for it, but then some build up to it. Yeah. Talking about the making of and Frankie Muniz and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right, right. I never saw it. Yeah. I mean, okay. it wasn't made for us at our age. Right? No, I don't think the so. The time either. it came out. <laughs> uh, nine, he has Air Bud. Air Bud. Uh, let's see. Not on this list. All right. Another movie I have not seen. Yes. Um, and he says this was a childhood favorite of mine as I thought watching a movie featuring Air Bud playing basketball was awesome. Plus, the chemistry between Kevin Zeggers as Josh and Buddy was heartfelt. Ooh, heartfelt. Uh, I mean, it had to be good. They made five, six, like a ridiculous number of those. Oh, yeah, they had a crap ton of these, yeah. And then you had the regular one. Then you had the other ones that were like the dog buddies all together. That was a whole separate series as well. Yeah. So, yeah, no surprise here. I've never, I've seen clips of it. Yeah. I've never Uh, seen it myself personally, but yes, I've seen clips of it all the time. People make fun of it in a... In a playful way, not in a negative way. And uh, this idea of a, a dog that can play basketball, I mean, he's like kind of crazy. So, and, uh, you know, it's Disney making a, a cheap movie that turned a hell of a profit. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. At eight, Jonathan's got Marley and Me. Marley and Me is, yeah, uh, it's the number seven on this one. So we can do it. Well, we'll I guess. We'll wait. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's fine because we're about to get to it with all of yours anyway. Yep. No, no problem. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about it now. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's, let's talk about it now. Um, he wrote, um, I'm going to get flack for putting this movie uh, low on my list, but this is not a movie I often rewatch. I do not think, or did not think, rather, Jennifer Aniston and Owen Wilson played interesting characters, but what saved the movie for me was the realistic portrait of how to raise a puppy. But in the long run, it is rewarding to accept the reality that the dog is part of your family. Oh, nice. I like that. Uh, Alex Sacco's, uh, he, by the way, Alex Sacco's offers no intro, and uh, that's fine. You know, he does so much for us. He, we know. Uh, he said, this movie would have been higher if it didn't rip your soul out at the end and broke it in two. Jesus. That being said, it's one of the most beautiful pet movies ever, and it has Jennifer Aniston in there. Hashtag Greek represent. Oh, I guess because he's Greek Alex Sacco, so he feels an affinity for Jennifer Aniston, who is the son or daughter of Greeks. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. I did not know that. Yes, well. And uh, Stun is a Greek name, so yeah. I think that's where he's getting that from. So and Very well could be. Yeah. I never saw this one. Oh, yeah? just I saw this one once. Once was enough. Uh, because yeah. the, the twist... Uh, although Alex Akos just gave it away. Uh, I already knew that long before I saw the movie because it, when it came out and it was like surprise hit and it was right. doing really well and then somebody was just like, oh yeah, this happens. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, I think I understand the movie before seeing it. Right, right, right. Um, not to say that it couldn't still be effective and good. Sure. But it's never comes up for me to go, oh, you know what I've never seen is this. Right. And it hasn't come up for the show, so. Good point. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, all right, so then starting off, my number 10 is uh, John Wick. I am looking at my list. I do not have it. Okay. The topic is top 10 movies featuring a dog, and this freaking dog is so well featured in the beginning of the movie that makes all want to go John Wick on the fools that dared to harm it. You can kill a human, but never a dog. You might wake up Baba Yaga. Um, a great explanation. I agree. It is certainly a movie that features a dog. The whole movie happens because of the death of the dog. True. So you can't deny that John Wick has uh, it, it qualifies for this list. Yeah, it's a great the choice. dog is an integral part of yeah. the the movie. The movie doesn't because it's a representation of his former wife. Yes, who has since passed, uh, was murdered. Yes. Um, and he got out, and by doing this, basically just draws him back in. Like, yeah. he took away the last sliver of my humanity type of thing. I'm thinking I'm back. Yeah. Uh, All right. Great movie. Great choice. Yeah, I agree. Good choice, Alex Sacos. Number nine is Lady and the Tramp. 
Um, no, that's an honorable mention. Wow, okay. He says, uh, Lady of the Giant number nine, Disney Plus brought us not only The Mandalorian. I wonder if Chewie counts as a space dog, by the way. No, it is not. But Lady and the Tramp, the movie is a beautiful modernization of the classic animation, and the blend of real dogs with their CGI counterparts is nearly seamless. Oh, so he's mentioning the Disney Plus Live action Lady and the Tramp, not the uh, oh. animated one. Fascinating. Okay. I haven't seen that. He said, unlike Call of the Wild and the deeply CGI Buck, all the dogs featured in the movie are beautifully blended. Also, the actual characters are more modernized to include more diversity, which really, uh, which Chris liked. So there you go. I haven't seen this one either. I know it's on Disney+. Plus. I know it's gotten good reviews. Uh, and I, know, I remember when it was announced that it was going to be happening on Disney+. Plus, and I wonder what the uh, ratings or the views are for this particular movie, if it's a success because of uh, it being released on Disney+. I'm Plus. assuming Disney went the Netflix route and they don't release numbers. Probably not, yeah. Um, so... Who knows? Yeah. But if it continues on, then clearly it's a, a hit amongst their subscribers. Well, I imagine if, you, like, I don't know what the situation is with, like, Publix and Netflix. I mean, sorry, Pub- uh, Netflix and uh, uh, Disney Plus. Do the board members get the view numbers? Do the board members get the views and get that oh, information? Of course they, do. they have oh, to. But they can't release it. They can't leak it or release it or anything like that. Well, they, I think it's just a choice for the company. Like, Netflix made a choice. We right. do not tell you what. What eventually, like when Bird Box, right? Then they released X number of users have watched this, right, right, right. Or it's gotten X number of views over the past like two weeks or something. When they have a wild, smashing success, yes, then uh, they'll reveal it. Yeah, or like Stranger Things instantly got a second season. Yes, they did. There was no hesitation; just right. the demand was so immediate. Right. Boom. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's definitely a hit. Mandalorian is definitely a hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but right. if yeah, it continues to go. Yeah, like they're going to stop after this season of Clone Wars. But what if Clone Wars becomes one of the most rewatched things on the app? Yeah, just it's easy and digestible for kids. And oh, well, okay, well, maybe we revisit that problem. Right, right. We'll see. Our right, number eight for Alex Sakos is Scooby Doo. On your list? Not on my list. Okay, what can I say? Scooby Doo is one of my favorite cartoons, and I feel the first movie did it justice. Is Scooby dreadfully CGI? Yes. Are the actors that played the roles awesome? Yes. Is Mr. Bean in it? Yes. What else do you need? Oh, there you go. I thought this movie was absolutely terrible and not my cup of tea, but yes, full of good actors like Freddie Prince and Cardellini. And Which one is the one the, where they go to the island? I know I've seen that one. I think that's the second one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's dog shit. Right, right. Uh, I don't know if I've seen the first one. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that's more stuff going down the pipe. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I couldn't tell you, but the second one was such an abomination. It really was. It was horrible. Um, I think this one is Matthew Lillard. His relationship with Scooby-Doo is fun because he's shaggy, obviously. Yeah. Um, and Cardellini is Velma having these, like, allusions to her appearance and allusions to her sexuality. That was kind of fun to throw in there. But I think overall, the film isn't as enjoyable as you want it to be. But, you know, and you're right. Uh, I mean, Alex Sakos is right. Uh, Scooby is dreadful in the CGI. So there you go. They made his number eight? Yeah, That's number kind of impressive. eight, yes. Uh, what's your seven? Seven, I've got the Sandlot. Ooh, good choice. Not on this list. All right. John says... Uh, this was the cheat. I, I would give it to you. Why? Even though it featured a group of baseball kids forming com- a camaraderie over one summer, most of the movie's fun and half of the running time were the kids formulating plans uh, for getting over or over getting the autographed Babe Ruth baseball from yeah. the junkyard dog, The Beast. A very good quote unquote summer movie. Uh, yeah, I think so because it's just it looms the beast looms so large. Yeah, and they yeah. have stories and they do that. Uh, the, that sleep over in the the treehouse, mm-hmm. and they're telling stories of the beast, and so the dog's huge. Yeah, its impact is felt within the movie. Certainly, I, I don't think it's a cheat at all. I think it works. Yeah, I think it works absolutely. And, yeah. and the dog's integral. Uh, they Featuring rep- is so such a wide yep. uh, potential interpretation. Subjective term for sure. Um, all right, so the my number six because uh, seven was Marley and me. Oh wait, do you have your six? That was your six. That was my uh, seven. So my six. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry, I jumped the gun. Sorry, is Old Yeller. 
Oh, good choice. Yeah, not on this list. Wow. Uh, he says, a very good movie about a family growing to love a stray yellow dog yeah. on a ranch in post-Civil War Texas. I would rank it higher, but again, I don't rewatch it many times due to the depressing nature towards the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, I'll do it. Uh, uh, it's my dog. I'll do it. Oh. <laughs> I technically don't think I've ever seen it. Wow, really? I know. Oh, man, yeah. It's a heartbreaking film. Yeah, I know you don't what it is. Right, right, right. But the build up to it is still so good. Still is it? so yeah, oh yeah. It still holds up. But you know, I'm a fan of those kinds of films. So, you know, kind of because it's, it's a little bit of a pseudo western. Uh so when what happens to Old Yeller happens to Old Yeller, you're just like, Oh my God. Oh my God. So yeah. It just seemed too slow for me as a kid. Oh really? Gotcha. Uh but at the same time I don't Not enough explosions. I, I don't know, whatever I wanted at whatever age I saw it at. I know but I don't think I sat through the whole thing. Like it was on T V or something. Yeah. Oh. Like, where's the love story for this bullshit? <laughs> uh, all right, number seven was Marley and Me from my list. Number six is Cujo. Is Cujo on your list? Cujo is not on my list. What? Wow. Yeah. Uh, a horror movie with a dog? If the dog is a huge St. Bernard, then yes. Not the best Stephen King adaptation, but it makes you f- also feel for Cujo and not just condemn him as the scary villain that he undoubtedly is. Yeah, because, I mean, Cujo was a representation of so many things that going on at the time for... Stephen King, which are his demons, his drug demons. I mean, Cujo is essentially that because that's how he felt uh, being a slave to uh, uh, his drug addiction. Is this idea of this thing is trapping him inside of a car mm-hmm. and can kill him if he gets out of the car and can kill him if he goes back into his addiction. So it was kind of a symbolic thing. So absolutely. And St. Bernard's a great choice because the St. Bernard seems like a very sweet dog. And for it to go crazy uh, kind of blows you, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of shocks you. And I think same thing with the drug addiction, like this idea of, oh, it makes me feel so good. How can something that makes me feel so good be leading me to my ultimate death, you know? So, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that was uh, <laughs> your six. Cujo, I, I, whatever. Yeah, you're not you're not a big fan of it. All right, I, I'll go back and watch other Stephen Kings before I watch Getting Close yeah. to Cujo. Sure, that makes sense. All right, what's your five? Five is Homeward Bound: The Incredible Journey. Okay, not on this list. All right, he puts the plot is a bit ludicrous, but the movie always hooks me. Don Amici and Michael J. Fox, who voiced the two dogs, a wise old golden retriever and an immature bulldog, and Sally Field, who voices the sassy cat, do a great job portraying the animal's thoughts and emotions as they go on their unpredictable cross-country odyssey. Amici's speech about a dog being man's best friend is poetic. Yeah. Sure. I, this is a whole list of movies I've never seen, <laughs> by and large. Uh, the thing is, you're saying this as your dog is sleeping next to you. That's pretty messed up, man. It's, oh, please. <laughs> she give two shits. She doesn't know. Have you seen The Homeward Bounds? Uh, yes. yes. You've seen this in The, the Incredible Journey? Yeah. I say, I watched it for the Schmodown to, just in case as, as a film that could come up. Because I saw it on a number of trivia questions, and I was like, all right, I might as well watch this. But it's one of those rare movies I watch. for the, I don't usually watch movies for the Schmodown, but that was one of those rare ones I watched just in case. Okay. Because I never knew. Because I wanted to remember, like... Maybe if there's plot specific stuff going on in the film that could be essential. So, uh, but I like the fact that Amici was doing a voice and Sally Field is doing a voice in this thing. And, yeah, Michael J. Fox and Michael J. Fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, uh, what do you got? A five? Uh, hundred and one Dalmatians. That's my number four. Oh, perfect. Uh, Alex Sacco says, one of my favorite animation movies from Disney, the characters, human and canine, are adorable. Plus, Corella Deville is one of the most villainous villains in the Disney catalog. Uh, Jonathan says roughly the same thing uh, the animated version of course mm. it is a fun charming film blended with some villainy and comedy from Cruella de Vil and her goons and some family love for Pongo and Perdita and the pups yeah uh, my one of my ex-girlfriends was Cruella de Vil at Disney for quite some time oh played the character yeah she played Mary Poppins and Cruella so nice dichotomy in the two sure. completely different characters she was great in both she was fantastic as both, you know, um, and she was a lot of fun to watch uh, doing. I mean, her name is Jamie Jean. I think we've t- I've talked about her way back when we first started doing the show. Okay. Uh, but yeah, she was great at doing Cruella, and people love Cruella, man. Like the way she would walk through, and then she'd see the dogs. Like if people brought their like assistant dogs or whatever assistance dogs, she'd make little cracks at their at the dogs' expense. It was great, great stuff. Man. I used to watch her go work. It was really funny. But 
Uh, are you a fan of the 101 Dalmatians movies? Like, have you seen yeah. them? Yeah. I, I mean, the first one, the yeah. animated, is excellent. It is excellent. It is. Uh, 102 and the Glenn Close remake, and they're all fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those of, I've seen it, but I'm not going to go back. Whereas 101, I would happily. Yeah. If, like, my nephew or niece wanted to put it on, I'll sit there and watch it because it's a it's a really good movie. It's got a lot of heart. Yep. And Cruella de Vil is an excellent villain. Right. Perfect name. Um, yes. One year we went to Disney World at, uh, took my brother's kids, uh, when they were younger. So Gabe and his little sister and his older brother. Right. And, uh, it was around Halloween and at the time you could go and dress up and you, they would give you candy and stuff at the rides. Yeah. So my mom dressed up as Cruella DeVille, uh, and people were coming up to her and asking for her picture and whatnot. Oh. <laughs> but she looked like it, yeah, but it yeah. wasn't like Disney park character good enough. Right, right. So with, with, are they at home with these pictures of like, man, this is like the worst Cruella de Vil. Yeah, right. It's the Disney version. <laughs> Ton, I mean, so many people. Nobody asked for a picture with anybody else except for Cruella because she was the only one that went Disney. Right. Everybody, like I was a fireman and yeah. you know, everybody was random, just other things. Right. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, but 101 Dalmatians, it's a good movie, good choice. Very much so. Uh, what's your number four? That is my four. What's oh, yours? Sorry. Uh, four here is Isle of Dogs. Ha, that's my number three. Wow. Uh, Wes Anderson slash animation and a heartwarming story in the midst of a dystopian future, plus all the great actors that usually work with Wes bring their A-game. I agree. I love Isle of Dogs. I don't understand why it got bad reviews. I don't understand why it didn't make a lot of money. I, I'm so confused. This film was so damn good, so distinctly Wes Anderson in such a unique and interesting way that it shocked me that it didn't do as well or isn't as revered as his other films. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan wrote, even though I don't rank it as one of the top tier Wes Anderson films, it's still a very good movie adding to his impressive filmography. He took risks by creating a dystopian world in Japan where, where an outbreak of canine influenza forces the dogs to be banished on Trash Island. Yeah. Underneath all the bleakness, it is a heartwarming story about a dog pack voiced by Brian Cranston, Ed Norton, Bill Murray, Jeff Goldblum, and Bob Balaban, mm -hmm. helping a boy searching for his long lost dog. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. I just don't know that I'll go back and rewatch it. If I'm going to watch really? his claymation, I'll go Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah, that's a good one. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, okay. Well, didn't most people slag on it because they felt it was insensitive towards Japanese people yeah. and the, like the interpretations or characterizations of those individuals? Yeah, but they didn't like cast non-Japanese people to do it. Japanese actors of name and note are in it playing these characters. And so, you know, if you so like if you have a Western and you have a guy walk up and he's speaking in a Western accent, is that a characterization? I don't know. I mean, like, what are you talking about here? That's what bothered me a little bit. What do you they, mean in a Western accent? Like, they, they walk in, they're like, hey, man, what are you doing? Like, something like that, or a deep Southern accent. Does that make a characterization? Does that make it a character? I don't, a characterization, rather, or uh, what they're, or caricature, rather. Is that true? I don't know. Like, what they did is some of these Japanese people have the strong, had the stronger present, and they were speaking J Japanese, some of them, and they were speaking in an English accent, some of them, but their presentation was a strong Japanese character mm -hmm. you know so i didn't sense that there's and i'm a massive fan of japan japanese cinema i didn't sense there was any kind of uh racism or yeah, unfairness neither did I. japanese characters but yeah it's a rush to offense age yeah so. true very true um all right that's your number three that's my three okay so what's yours my three is something i never heard of called hachi have you ever heard of this Nope, not okay. on my list and not an honorable mention. Okay. One of my favorite true stories, even the whitewash with Richard Gere, the soul of the story is there. Warms your heart with a sweet ache. Truly one of the greatest stories of loyalty and a clear proof of dog superiority over hated cats. Yikes. One got Hachiko and the other got cats. Okay. I do not know anything about this movie. Especially once he said Richard Gere, because that's a big enough name to where... Yeah, you would have heard about it. Yeah, think? it would spark to mind whatever the, at least the movie poster is. Yeah, yeah, let me Hachi? see here. Hachi. Was it released in Japan only or Maybe. something like that? It sounds like a Japanese name. No, Hachi, A Dog's Tale from 2009. Oh, so it's part of the Dog's Tale series? Maybe, yeah. That's why I tuned oh, it out. Oh, yeah, it's rated G. Richard Gere, Joan Allen. Uh, Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa is in this thing. Sarah Romer, Jason Alexander. Uh, wow, interesting cast here, man. Lassie Hallstrom directed this thing. What? He did the Cider House Rules and Chocolat. What's eating Gilbert Grape? Fascinating. But notice that it's been 15 years since his height. <laughs> it's a fair point, man, because his last films are Nutcracker in the Four Realms, which. 
I mean, bombed. Right. Totally for how much bombed. it cost. Totally bombed. Uh-huh. Uh, a Dog's Purpose. Which the, was the follow-up to the first one, was it not? Uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. I'm not aware of these. Wasn't A Dog's Life first? And then, so A Dog's Purpose is like second, and well, maybe, maybe Hachi is third as part of the Dog's Life series. Oh, to, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. Because it just says A Dog's Purpose. A Hundred Foot Journey, Safe Haven, The Hypnotist, Salmon Fishing in the Yemen, Dear John, then... We get to Hachi, a dog's tail. So, yeah. Um, oh, no. He, uh, yeah, he did the shipping news as well as Cider House Rules. I like the shipping news. Not a great film, but it's certainly an enjoyable film. Uh, anyway, all right. There you go. That's, uh, what was that, number three? Your three. So, yeah. my two is The Fox and the Hound. Not on this list. All right. Yeah. He writes, this is a very good movie about two unlikely friends, a fox named Todd and a hound dog named uh, Copper, mm-hmm. who struggle to preserve their friendship due to their changing nature and social backgrounds. The movie shows that despite the differences and them learning to be with their own kind, true friendship never dies. It is a bittersweet conclusion, but it is reality. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, Fox and the Hound is good. Yeah. It doesn't get as much love as other Disney's. It's right around that time when they were starting to like like Disney wasn't making films that were making yeah. a lot of money. It was, you know, in a darker time for Disney where their animation almost closed shop. Yeah. Because they just kept having like Black Cauldron. Right. Was not good for them. Right. Right. Uh, and they just had a series of missteps. You know, uh what was that one? Uh with the the Billy Joel dog in New York City. Oh, the Beagle, Oliver and Company. Oliver and Company. Oof. Which opened against Don Bluth's company oh, opened against uh, American Tail. Oh, and wow. got crushed, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was part of like that whole until they got to Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid and they had their renaissance right. Right. where they started just going back to the Hans Christian Andersen and all the, the well trod. Yeah. At least Fox and the Hound, they were trying to do something different. But uh, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good yeah. choice. I like it. All right. Uh, his number two is White Fang. Oh, not on my list. Uh, by far, my favorite Jack London novel adaptation, a story about overcoming your own Jack and White Fang, wild nature, and coming to terms with it. Ethan Hawke is great, and Jed the Wolf Dog proves that animals in movies sometimes are worth the training you put in them. Yukon and Alaska make you long for the frontier and adventure in this great movie. Also scored by Basilis Polidaris, hashtag Greek represent. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I saw White Fang once I thought it was a good movie Right around that time When I was like Enjoying Ethan Hawke films um, uh, And yeah I mean it's not one I'll go back and watch again But I certainly enjoyed it Yeah I feel was. the same way Yeah Although I've never been A big Jack London fan so. Oh okay yeah, They're fine Okay Call the Wild I was forced to read In school at some point And I, I just never cared for it Yeah I don't I don't want to see That Harrison Ford movie That looks No that looks like dog Terrible shit. yeah so uh, the Dog CGI so my number one yes. is Best in Show. Oh, that's a great it's choice. It's a great choice. Not on this list. Not number one for him. So what a great choice. Yeah, he, he writes, I always love mockumentary comedies, and I do think This is Spinal Tap is uh, the definitive mockumentary. Of, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But this movie is close. Is uh, It shows the obsessive nature of how owners take care and prep their par- pets to become as spotless as possible for a Philadelphia dog show. <laughs> it is a talented group of actors whose improv- improvisational styles made me chuckle and smile throughout as it slowly crescendos to another level where Fred Willard's commentary made me laugh a lot. <laughs> uh, I agree, man. Best of the show is just fantastic. Oh, it's perfect, dude. Uh, I love the Christopher Guest stuff. Um, a big fan of, like... Is, is it uh, Eugene Levy who has the weird thing with his leg when he's walking around the dog, or is it Catherine Era? No, there. Uh, yeah, Eugene Levy. Yes, yes, because he has his feet go backwards, right, right, like right. the opposite direction. <laughs> but they're married, right? And then you got uh, McKeon is married to another guy. Yeah, that great comedic character actor that's been in a million. Yeah, things. yeah, with the three name Michael or something. Yeah. Things, yeah. And you got Parker Posey and the other dude whose name I'll never pull. Right, right. They play the uptight wasps. Yes. And uh, they got Jane Lynch. Jane Lynch and the yeah. woman from American Pie. Yes. That Jennifer plays Coolidge. Stifler's mom or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they're they're technically, I guess, a couple by the end of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she leaves the rich old dude. Yeah, she's she's married to the rich old dude, and Jane Lynch is the dog trainer. Yeah. And they eventually fall for one. Each- yeah. Right. So how they all end up at the Westminster Dog Show. Yeah, it's genius. I it mean, is. Chris Every- doing the peanut, yeah. hazelnut, walnut. Oh, my God. 
just the I mean, he looks like a hound dog yeah, he does. as he's talking. He does. <laughs> What's your number one? Uh Iron Will. Um my favorite dog related movie was playing nonstop on winter Sunday afternoons in Greek TV. The story of adversity and overcoming the odds would Will and Gus do whatever it takes to win the race. Pure Disney magic and secret sauce. Poor kid, no family, big opportunity, adversity, rising past the challenge, getting to the finish line. Everybody cheers, tears everywhere. Damn you, Dizzy, you know all the tricks. There you go. That's true. Yeah. Who was in Iron Will? Do you remember? Nope. Was it a person of note? I'm trying to see if it's a person of note. Iron Will... Uh, Mackenzie Aston, Kevin Spacey in this thing, David Ogden Steers, uh, Brian Cox. Wow. All right. All right. It's very interesting. Well, there you go. Iron Wheel. So well, let's see. We have what? Isla Dogs and 101 Dalmatians in common near in our top fives, right? Okay. I would still say Best in Show would be my number one. Okay. Yeah, I'm cool with that. And then what, Iron Will after that or no? Well, then we have... I, I've never seen Iron Will, so okay. I couldn't tell you if it's good, bad, okay. or anything else. Okay. I'm fine with putting it there if you want. Well, I don't want to upset Chris Alexakos, who helps us so much on the Patreons and stuff, so I'm happy to That's put true. it there. That's true. If you want to put two. Iron Will first for that reason. No, right? no, no. <laughs> I won't. I, my uh, appreciation doesn't extend over quality, and I'll certainly put Best in Show first. So then we would say you have Isle of Dogs at four, Dalmatians at five? Mm-hmm. All right, so we'll go Isle of Dogs, then Dalmatians. Okay. All right. Do we have any other commonality? No. Mm, Lindy and the Tramp, no. John no. Wick, no. Scooby-Doo, Marley and Me, no. Cooper. Oh, Marley and Me, we both have, but it's oh, lower. We do. Okay, cool. Do you want to save that for later? Yeah, we save it for later. Sorry, what's your next highest? White Fang at number two. Uh, I got Fox and the Hound. Ooh. I'll let you make the call. So I made the call on Cycles earlier. Well, he lost in the placement of okay. the other two, so we'll give White Fang on this one. Okay. Very well said, politically. I mean, I would choose Fox and the Hound, but right, right, right. it's kind of six one way, half a dozen the other. Okay. All right. So then probably Marley and me there. Yeah, that sounds good. What number are we at? That's seven. Okay. Yeah, that works. What do you got uh, left? I got Hachi at number three. Okay. Uh, H-A-T-C-H-I? H-A-C-H-I. Ah, uh, no T. All right. Next highest? Uh, Cujo at six. Okay, I got Homeward Bound at five. Okay. And then I got Old Yeller at six. You got Cujo. Uh, is it the last slot? Yes. Oh. I'm going to have to go with Old Yeller. All right. Yeah, no offense, Chris, but Old Yeller is a classic. Cujo less so. All right, he's busy, don't All right, let's do this thing. The top 10 movies featuring a dog on the relist. Yeah. At number 10. Old Yeller. At number 9. Homeward Bound. At number 8. Hachi. At number 7. Marley and Me. At number, oh, at number 6. The Fox and the Hound. At number 5. White Fang. At number four. 101 Dalmatians. At number three. Isle of Dogs. At number two. Iron Will. And our number one uh, movie featuring a dog on the real list is... Best in Show. Oh, Best in Show. Um, Our thanks to... Jeff Kelly, Jonathan Caro, and Chris Alexakos uh, for you know being patrons over at patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10. Absolutely. And to everybody that supports us over there, we thank you immensely. Uh, you know, Tune into this week's upcoming uh, show because it's a, a patron uh, topic, and also we give shout-outs at the end of that show, so stay tuned for that. Yeah. And please, if you are thinking about uh, going to the show in London, hit up the website. Go to kingsplace.co.uk. Yeah. Let's sell this thing out. 
Um, we haven't really been promoting all that hard because it's still a uh, ways out. But now the promotional pitch or push comes. We are two and a half months out. We want to sell this fucking place out, guys. <laughs> Last year, we had like 11 or 12 countries fly in. We did. And it was awesome. We want to meet all of you. We're going to do a longer show with a Q&A or something attached at the end because we got the extra time. Yep. And uh, uh, we want to, you know, uh, really have a blast with this, blow it out, and uh, do a huge show. To, uh, so please go to kingsplace.co.uk. Pick up your tickets there. 30 pounds. Doors open at 7. Shows at 8. And we look forward to seeing you that night. And uh, you can follow me anywhere at Matt Nost, M-A-T-T-K-N-O-S-T. And check out my other podcast, please, if you want to. Uh, it's called Embrace the Hate. There you go. Check, uh, yeah, yeah. Follow me at The Rogue Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And as I say recently on every show, please follow or subscribe to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash John Rogue Says. Get involved in all that. And of course, my Patreon as well, www.patreon.com slash John Rogue. We'll see the multiple tiers there. Anything else to say? Uh, oh, yeah, let's yeah, talk about this. Yeah, yeah they're, so we're thinking about doing, instead of doing two relists a month, because Alex Akos, some months has to jump through numerous hoops just to get responses. Yeah, it's becoming a bit of a chore for everybody involved. Uh, because, and no offense to any of you all who are patrons, you're all extremely busy trying to track it down, get your list, get it all squared away. It's becoming an issue, but we want to respect the patrons who donate to us and support the show. So we've been kicking around an idea for a, a replacement show. And it's... In essence, going to be somewhat like a modified Thunderdome. So what we're thinking is all the people that that are part of the relist, so at the $20 and up tier, uh, collectively, you guys will choose whatever topic you want. And we need, in essence, a foreman that can handle this, like a jury foreman. Yeah. And you're going to help us corral all this and come to consensus and like, hey, for this version, uh, you know, this month's show, because we initially see how it goes, replace one relist with one of these. Mm-hmm. And if it takes off and you guys love it, then we'll just, uh, you know, phase a relist out or we'll figure out something else. But uh, you guys eventually, between you, figure out the topic and we'll select the two movies and then we open up voting at that point, And uh, then we'll talk about whatever wins uh, Thunderdome yeah. for that week. So uh, whoever is a patron at the $20 level and up, and is listening to this and like to basically be our foreman and uh, yeah. help us uh, with all this because we don't want to add more to Alex Akos' plate. He's already doing so much for us. Yeah. Uh, please reach out over at Patreon, but we'll also put up a post about this describing what the new show is going to be. And uh, uh, hit us up over there at patreon.com forward slash the top 10 to make your voice heard. And we hopefully uh, uh, have a winner on our hands. You guys enjoy this show. And uh, it's more interactive for everybody involved who's participating at this tier. Uh, yeah. Trying to get more of you, you know, uh, interactive each month. And do you want to open the door to see if they want to suggest any shows, Matt, or any topic, or like any kind of versions of a show or anything like that? Or you just sure. want to leave it at this? Yeah, no, that's okay. fine. Um, yeah, if one of y'all wants to su- wants to look, yeah, you know the post? email address that you can hit us up at. There you go. Hit us up at that email address if you have an idea for a show, and we can also make that part of the post that describes this. Right. And for those at the lower tier, uh, one below the ten dollar tier, you have that email address as well. So if you want to uh, hit us up with uh, any ideas you've got, because Eric Grebner gave us the relist, right? And uh, we love it, and we've done it for a long time. But you know, um, it, it'd be nice to do something to uh, new, mix it up, yeah. Give you guys a, a slight uh, difference each yeah. month. There's less of a headache on Alex Sacco's trying to corral everyone as well. It would be good. So we want to make it about twenty to twenty five minute show. So think of whatever ideas you want to send it through. If not, certainly the one with Matt just Matt and I just proposed uh, is the one we're going to go with for now until we find a way to replace the relist down the road. So there you go. Any anything else? Nope. That's it. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode or listening to this episode of The Relist. The Relist.